Hello darling, welcome to the car and uh, so good to spend a nice day with you. It's been a while. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. It's nice to be back on the road, going on a kite, vi a kite mission together. I'm excited <laughs> and yeah, let's go for some good vibes and good riding. Exactly. I mean, where are we off to? Do you, do you even know Strand? <laughs> it's been quite a few years since I've been in, uh, in Strand, so looking forward to having a session there again. It's nice to mix it up and I've had all my sessions recently have been in Bloberg, so nice to kind of venture out, 100%. hit Strand up. Yeah, I feel like we've been exploring uh, the last two months here in Cape Town quite a bit and uh, now the wind is coming from the right and it wasn't so strong there, but I think it's Strand is picking up to maybe 30 knots and maybe even stronger, so that's what we like. Huh? Nice! Yeah, to get to know Hannah Whiteley a little bit better, I think uh, I was going to ask you a bunch of questions about your childhood as well, because you have uh, some brothers and sisters. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, so I have two brothers and one sister, so I'm the oldest. Uh, and the I'm, wisest? I would like to think so, but sometimes I think my little sister that's 10 years younger than me, she might be the <laughs> wiser one. <laughs> she seems to have all the life advice and everything. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so... Um, but uh, yeah, my two brothers, one of them kites, but not that often, and my sister Polly, she can kite as well. Um, but they're quite busy with all the stuff in their life, so they just go for the very occasional session it's but more my dad that's kite crazy every opportunity he will be on the water i think he rides more than me actually it's just like any breath of wind he is out shredding he's got a foil board and he's fully obsessed with it he's he does some loops on the foil as well and um yeah so he loves it and wave riding he just likes to do it all on that and my my mom is um not a kiter, she likes going for long walks and yoga and that kind of vibe, that namaste vibe. Nice, all in 10. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's beautiful, but yeah, I ran into your dad the other day, it's like, Ruben, Ruben, and I didn't recognize him at first, but then he said, oh yeah, Mahana's dad. I was like, I was sick, and he's like, can I get a selfie? And yeah, he's got such a stoke over him, I think that's where it comes from, I think you have yeah. that as well, right? Yeah. yeah, and it's just, I think it's so special if you can share a passion with your family and it just brings you so much together. I think your brother also kites as well. 100%, yeah, two of my yeah. brothers kite and uh, Dan uh, just came on a, a trip to Egypt on a kite safari and uh, was trying to learn a bit. So uh, hopefully he's getting oh. going this uh, this year more with it. But, that's really nice. And it's just, that, yeah, it definitely brings you closer. That's for sure. And you just have that same energy and you, you know, after a good session, it's like there's nothing better. So if you can share that with your kind of, yeah, your loved ones, your family, then it's it's awesome. 100%. And um, yeah, I think of, and it's just like now he's my dad's and mum and dad are out here for a month and it's it's really nice. I enjoy wow. them. Just it's no, my dad is like my favorite person to kite with. So nice. um, yeah, it's good. And I thought it was me. Oh well, mate, you're, yeah. you're, you're up there too, hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my dad's mission is um, now he's got a selfie with you and he needs a selfie with you and Aaron in the same picture. Oh, so. <laughs> when is his birthday? We can make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> No, we just saw your dad actually out there on his uh, little uh, yellow kite and he used to ride his foil a lot. Yeah, he's only on the foil now. He's nice. full foil mode. And you? Any foil moments? Yeah, I like it to be honest. Oh, yeah. um, I don't go out foiling that often, but I think I just really love mixing it up these days. I think if I've had a lot of free riding or big air sessions, I just like, I like mixing it up. And that's why this year I also did, well actually last year, um, I did a few winging sessions as well. It was just nice to mix it up, and I think that's a bit of the, like the spice of life. And For sure. um, like if I've had a, quite a few windy, strong wind days, I'm craving a bit lighter wind to, to do a bit of free riding, freestyle stuff. Um, sure. So yeah, what about you? Do you like mixing it up, or you just you've always been super driven in in the strong wind? And that, is that always is that does that still now really motivate you? Yeah, I mean, my heart starts beating faster uh, as the stronger the wind is and I'm really drawn to that extreme side of the sport like with all the power at your fingertips yeah. instead of like working it too hard. But like you say, yeah, it's fun to mix it up and yeah, we all have different emotions and different days. So yeah, whatever the conditions offer, I will definitely have fun playing. Yeah. And uh, I've missed enough sessions due to injuries and illness in the past. So whatever session I can get, I will, I will get it. And uh, yeah, it just stokes me out to just even get a splash of water in my face and get my suit wet and uh, yeah, just be amongst the community, connect with nature, connect with myself. And uh, that's what I, I strive for. Yeah, because I remember last year when I, saw you i think we were kind of near betty's bay or somewhere like that i think I'm, um 
and you just come off the water after like a three hour session it wasn't even strong wind at all but you're just having the best time doing some playing with some board offs and that and that was super nice to see because i think in my mind i always have you only going out in the, the crazy gnarly conditions but nice it was just really nice to see you just being super stoked off uh pretty light wind like on the yeah. 10 meter or 12 yeah. meter just like doing board offs and that exactly so that was... i mean i still learn something every session right like yeah. whether you're practicing new board offs with rotations or flips or tripping yourself out with looking somewhere else like looking upside down and just really enjoying that feeling it's yeah there's just always something to learn and to try out and maybe we even get to ride that spot like i think it was pringle bay yeah um, that was it pringle bay yeah so if it's not good today at strand we might cruise on to uh, kogel bay beach and maybe to pringle bay so who knows we get to ride there again yeah i think you also told me you saw a shark or something as well i was like great that was the first thing you told me before i was getting on the water i saw a shark <laughs> like yeah. oh damn no really like i was i was on my way to hermanas and then the wind wasn't good there for this phone yeah the wind just died and then I just made a U-turn and uh, drove to Pringle Bay Beach and kiting there by myself. I was like, okay, that's fun. And I wanted to try so many borders, but then like on my third tag out, I just saw a fin. I was like, shit. And then I was so scared the whole session and I lost my board so many times. And then I was like, always oh, so, so scared about it. But then in the end, it was like a sunfish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> out here. No, you told me it was a shark. Oh, no. Oh, right. Put no. in my leg. I thought I saw a shark back in 2005 in Big Bay. Then I turned around and I saw a massive fin as well. But I think mostly it's just a sunfish here. Yeah. yeah I, I saw it. I did see a sunfish or whatever they are the other day. But it, I had, yeah, I had, I, I had like this instinct note, you know, like if you see something a bit weird in the water, most people go away. I was like drawn to it. I was like, am I stupid? Or what, what if this is not? And I really want to go closer to check what it is. Like, is that just a bit weird or what? I mean, I guess I am a bit weird, but um, <laughs> we're all weird, darling. But to be honest, <laughs> yeah, I think that's why we're all crazy about kiting. Exactly. No, but like, I mean, being in the water and seeing the wildlife or playing in their habitat. So it is. Yeah, I'm also curious to check it out. Like, I'm always looking for sharks and kind of, yeah, curious about mm. them, you know. And I feel more comfortable being underwater swimming with them than kiting with them. Yeah. Uh, because when you're kind of, they're like wild dogs, you know. Like, when you make them curious with, like, sudden movements and splashing, they actually are curious and come to check you out. Yeah. Um, and whenever I fall from my board and I'm body dragging towards my board, the closer I get to my board, the more afraid I get. Like, when I get on my board, like, oh, shit, you know. <laughs> Oh, sometimes I do this really weird thing where I do like a countdown in my head and I give myself five seconds to get my board and if I don't then a shark's gonna eat me. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like I'm like five, four and then I'm like gets to like two and I'm like, oh my god, I'm not on my board yet, and I'm gonna get eaten. And just like I make this little game in my head. Yeah. But I honestly like I've been coming here for the last sixteen years and I've never seen a shark. But I'm pretty sure there must have been so many sharks, like probably even circling me or whatever. But I think I'm just that much in Hannah land when I'm having my kite <laughs> sessions. I'm just, I remember once when I was in Barbados, everyone was like, did you see all the turtles? They're everywhere. And I was like, what? I never saw any. Like, I don't know, like, where are they? Like, <laughs> in Hannah land, I yeah, love it. It's, uh... Uh, I mean, it is a special place, you know, and the mind does play weird games with us, like even on land or in life or even on the water, sometimes you just, not so in the session, but like your mind is just like wandering off and it's nice to just be aware of that and draw yourself back into the session and yeah, really try and make the most of the feeling out there. Um, yeah. But it's just such a nice energy outlet and 
Yeah, just to clear the mind. Definitely, and I think it's it's just extra special here in in Cape Town as well. Like we have these incredible mountains backdrop. It's like wow, it feels like a kind of stadium exactly. around you, and there's definitely an energy, and especially with all your mates on the water and stuff. It's yeah, like it's you soon forget about sharks or whatever unless you're getting the board. And also, what I did realize though, when it was sunset the other day, and I was out. I was looking at my twin tip, uh, my Cabrina Spectrum board, and I was like, this actually looks exactly like a seal colours <laughs> underneath. <laughs> it's like grey, black and white. I was like, oh, I should have maybe thought Perfect. about that. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'll rub some fish oil all over Yeah, oh, no, please don't. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, it can be kind of scary, but I mean, the mind is a strong thing, and uh, I think we've both been going through massive downs and massive ups in our lives, and yeah, through your injuries, I think they taught you a lot as well. Uh, what have been some of your biggest injuries and yeah, what was the first reaction and what was the final conclusion? Yeah, it's the, like that's the hard thing, I think, being an athlete, having to deal with um, injuries and it is a big part of our, our lives that we have to deal with and it's, it does suck. But I think now I more have the mindset of like everything kind of happens for a reason and sometimes you're just supposed to slow down even if you think you could take on everything and do that and that's normally when it happens when you're trying to take I feel like when you're trying to take on too many things and I think um well last year I which I mean I've had like injuries with ankles and stuff before but I think the worst thing was actually um in February last year so basically a year ago I um did a kite loop late back roll and uh, I've always have a like if I haven't done it for a while I do get a little bit scared about this trick and I and then I was out with some friends and they were really pushing me I had a bit of a block in my head to go for it and they pushed me to go for it and I went for it but I rotated um like way too early and I just kind of got stuck backwards and landed from flipping high onto my back and uh, it, it, I completely blacked out. Oh, I was shit. winded, I couldn't breathe and I couldn't see anything. I was just like trying to to stay afloat. That's what I remember I was trying to do. And then Hill, he came over to me. He's like, you all right, you all right? Um, and I was like, just, I just wanted to hold on to him to stay afloat, that's all. There. And then got in and I just knew something was really not right. And I, um, I basically dislocated two ribs. I didn't know if that was possible. It's called a subluxation. So where the rib, joins the spine like the, it, the, it ripped uh, ripped the ligament and the two ribs popped out and it's just like honestly it's only just like good now but now I have some other like just like pain in my back where I never used to have and I feel like so it's still not kind of right now and I just didn't understand it because I think with say if you like kind of break your ankle or your wrist or something you kind of understand it and with the spine it's so complex and I just felt really like, a, and it's your whole center as well. So you can't really do anything. Um, so that was just, yeah, really frustrating because I try and always understand my injuries. And mm. like, uh, I think as well, if you kind of give the, send the positive energy to there and be positive, then you do heal so much faster. But because I didn't understand this, it was like really messing with my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think like injury wise, that was just, I really struggled with that. And I think more with me, than being physically injured. Sometimes I suffer a bit like more in my mind when everybody thinks everything's good. Like sometimes I'm not so good in my head kind of thing. I struggle a bit sometimes with just like, yeah, like just with more mental stuff. Um, and you kind of, that's almost worse I think because you, you look like you're fine and you, there's not really, and I almost sometimes feel a bit like, yeah, I obviously, I, and I really do think we have like most incredible lives you know we could be having a totally different life and um, but there's also some there's also some things that are hard too and I almost feel like maybe I, sh I don't deserve to feel like to shouldn't deserve to feel like kind of down or something when it, everything's so great but there is times where it's hard so of yeah course. I think like that side as well is more what's kind of affecting me a bit sometimes as yeah. well and it's hard to um, what about you? And Yeah, no, I, I feel you there and thanks for sharing that because it is, uh, I'm, I've also had my very dark moments and even a burnout um, and it is kind of scary when you think your mind is so strong that you totally get knocked off and you feel depressed, you know, and yeah. it's like, it, it, I mean, it can come from finances or yeah, taking on too many things mm. and just 
feeling burned out or yeah when certain projects don't go ahead and like your dreams are further away from the reality than you would have liked and uh, yeah it can just knock you off you know yeah. and I think it's very normal and especially these days because we're all so yeah um, overstimulated basically by all the yeah the impulses that we get throughout the day that we're already at a hundred percent and probably even we pushed it to 120 percent and then people come with even more stuff and then we're running it like yeah i don't know it's just no. not sustainable you know yeah definitely and i think we have like in our lives going on these trips and shoots and stuff and organize you get like huge highs mm -hmm. so and you can it's not really sustainable to be going like high 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 and then sometimes when i go back i used to really struggle when i went back to the uk and then everything's kind of very normal and um, you know and I would always then just in the winter if I came back I would really just be in a dark place and it was really hard to be like I could feel like a lot I couldn't really relate to a lot of people because nobody really gets it like everybody thinks you're just going on holidays anyway and doesn't know actually there's a lot of like stress that also goes and complicated things to bring shoes together and be creative um, and uh, yeah, and then it's like, it's also like you're busy, 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 busy. And then when you slow down, it's like, oof, you go really down. And yeah. I think like now I really try to, I've, I feel like I really try to in, in, enjoy, the, like see the beauty in the mundane, which I think it, it took me quite a long time to, to, to see that. And I think this winter I spent quite a lot of time in the UK. And normally, I mean, for the last 31 years of my life, I've always kind of been like, oh, I want to be out of the UK winter as much as possible. But I really actually started to enjoy to the, appreciate the cold. It. Yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah. just the little things. And it's so important in life, whatever you're doing, to just see like, there's always something to smile about. And, but you just have to choose to see it. It's there, but you exactly. just gotta look at it. And I think, um, yeah, and I was just like, it was freezing cold over the winter, but I just was like, Oh man, we had a, like a whole week of just like a frosty, frosty days with like beautiful blue, piercing blue skies and sunshine. I was like, this is just magic. There's so much magic in winter and just like spots being empty. Um, but normally I would be like, oh, it's freezing. I should be in Cape Town or whatever. <laughs> yeah, my mindset is like every like you can grow in so many different ways and. Um, and I think uh, yeah, and it's what's special about the kite community is you're all kind of on the same page because you know how it is with traveling and like we don't see each other that often but when we do see each other it's like we felt like yeah, yesterday yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we know what like, we're up to we understand each other like-minded yeah. people definitely yeah. and uh i mean that's so true that people don't really understand what goes into being a kite surf or a pro athlete the yesterday or two days ago a guy says oh so you, uh, you just do kite surfing or what i was like uh yeah it is kite surfing indeed um but yeah what comes with that like what, what goes into being a pro athlete like you know? yeah well there's like there's so many different elements and of, like of course it's like the the kind of yeah basically the dream job so you know but everybody wants to do this so you have this other there's like a huge amount of pressure i would say like kind of on you always to deliver and you know if it was easy everybody would do it um so you know and like just like you know like you're arranging this shoot now like a lot goes into it and there's also a lot of like hiccups that can happen like we're following mother nature and you know that can the forecast can say one thing and it can be totally different and you're paying out for videographers filmmakers you know going to like spend the whole day driving to get there and then it can not work out and and there's all different complications and stuff and sometimes it's just like little things like you know you've not seen your family in a really long time or whatever or close friends or having relationships it's it's quite difficult um, and I think like naturally like as well you you push hard to put out a lot of content and stuff and it takes consumes so much effort yeah. and like I think we're both a bit like kind of a little bit perfectionists and stuff and um, yeah you want to just make sure you give it 110 percent all the time but it, it does like after a full-on shoot i honestly feel like i need to be in some sort of isolation for a while after to like recharge and that's the thing with creativity you have to it's so important to recharge and there's often not not really time to do that when you're back-to-back -back trips yeah no 100 percent. i feel you like yeah. we, we have to manage our our content uh, so yeah we're basically social media managers uh, we have to stay fit so we go to the gym, uh, we have to manage our finances, look for new sponsors, uh, come up with new projects, make sure uh, everybody's happy, 
make sure the conditions are there. Uh, it's a lot of loose yeah, ends. Writing know, so. articles for magazines and stuff like there's so many different things and especially like if you're making vlog YouTube vlogs and stuff, like a lot of time goes into that, like you know, giving feedback and editing it and everything. Hundred percent. And what are the projects that you really thrive on? Like to keep the balance, what what kind of project would you pick? I think what excites me now is just trying to do something a little bit different. Like um, last year, I really enjoyed carding in the tulips in the Netherlands. Uh, just doing something that's, I think that's really. That's I forbidden, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't I... kite illegal spots, people. <laughs> yeah. No, it looked very good. Looked very no, no, but it's just. Um, yeah, obviously there's yeah there's risk and it's not something I would advise anybody to do. This is like a one-off <laughs> shoot kind of thing. It's not where you go for your weekly session. But um, yeah, just trying to think or oh, just going to new locations I think is special. Um, and doing cool things like this with you and it's just nice sharing, you know, showing a bit more of a personal side as well. Like I think sometimes I don't, I feel like I don't always maybe show quite a personal side as I do because I think it also takes a lot of energy just uh, and it's I feel like it's already so much content Instagram TikTok Facebook YouTube if you're doing anything else and like the magazine stuff yeah. it's like there's, there's like not enough hours in the day kind 100%. of thing. Uh, um, are you on TikTok as well yes yeah I yeah. mean you've been having quite some epic content and uh, lots of things going viral how uh, yeah how do you feel about that yeah like obviously um it's it's fantastic if things go you know go viral but it's also kind of you have to be careful a bit i think because sometimes then i find myself getting a bit like addicted to checking the stats of something like if a video's <laughs> blown up i want to check it all the time and i it's really like then it's i'm not quite as present as i want to be i feel like and um also um yeah like something you put in a ton of effort will ha will can can not get any reaction at all a very little reaction yeah. and it just feels you know obviously it, it i don't want it to control my mood i just want to be like put the content out i'm happy with it and i know i try to not be like if it goes <laughs> good then that's great and if it doesn't it doesn't matter because i'm happy with it and responses or whoever is yeah, exactly. involved with are happy and that's i think it's so easy but now it's like it's crazy with social media it looks like everybody's having a good time all the time and mm. um you know not many people are showing the tough side and of, of things and or people are doing stuff just for social media so but yeah so remember like you know what if you see our lives maybe everything looks perfect like there's obviously we have a like you know some days where we just feel like uh, everything's getting too much or whatever and um you know we're all kind of human and it's uh or bumping, yeah. our t bumping our little toe against the wall or something like, oh, <laughs> yeah. we're crying too. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, it's true. And that's what I try to do now as well here on the Kite Mana channel to just, yeah, bring things down to earth and keep things real. And of course, show the stoke and, but also the vulnerable side. I think that's very important. I think a lot of people struggle uh, nowadays to, yeah, find what they love, what they want in life. And yeah, I think getting to know people a little bit deeper really helps, uh, helps with that support as well. Yeah. So, I Thank you for that as well. I think you're a huge inspiration. Also, yeah, you've been a female kite surfer in the industry, like leading the sport. And uh, yeah, it's not about competitions for you either, right? It's no. more about free riding, loving the sport, and yeah, pushing yourself into new avenues. So that's oh, awesome. thank, thank you, Ruben. That's very nice of you. And yeah, I mean, you were always like when I was got involved in kite surfing you were definitely you and Aaron were my main idols I was just like whoa I remember when I met you the first time I was be like whoa I'm in a group like this is so exciting I remember the first time <laughs> yeah um, so yeah no and it's nice like and now um, yeah it's we both basically do a lot of content create mission and and it is like it's the, the competitions for sure are, you know, are tough because you have to put so many hours into training and, and everything. It's like, it's you've got to stay on your game all the time uh, because the competition sure as hell is too. Um, so, yeah, but then when you're doing your own stuff with the um, all this, you know, the social media stuff and, and just trying to think out the box with content, I mean, there's also a lot of pressure on yourself there as well to deliver and, you know, it's only... Like, yeah, so it's, uh, 
nothing's easy for sure, but it's, um, yeah, I think we're more in our elements just kind of doing this kind of creative side. And, Definitely. Mm. And managing your career, is it something you got to do for many more years or what do you see yourself grow into? I think I'm going to be carrying for a very long time. That's the goal. I think I'm, you know, it's been, I mean, for over half my life now, I've, um, kite surfing has been yeah the, the thing and um, yeah I think I would love to have something else going in the background um, like I, I, I'm really passionate about uh, kind of just like property stuff and I want to do some renovations myself and nice. kind of do some buy to let so to have that going like in the background it was like I mean I want to be here for a long time like yeah. I'm definitely not done yet Get to know Hannah White me a little bit better. I'm curious to try your kite as well. I'm gonna go on the eight meter apex. The eight I mean the eight meter apex. <laughs> the eight meter motorway apex. Yeah, give me some of that. Two. <laughs> So yeah, that was a really, really fun session. Thank you so much for letting me try your gear. I appreciate that. Yo, it was yeah. nice to have a session with you on the Motorex. Yeah. Apex. Apex. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why they keep calling kite surfing things Apex, but it's the material, right? It's the new material. Yeah, it's like uh, much lighter. Uh, and um, yeah, there's just so many kite surfing products already called the Apex. So uh, yeah, they could have chosen something different, but hey, the Moto X Apex, yeah, I really enjoyed riding the kite in the spot there. It was so beautiful, like riding around those mountains and yeah, it was just magical. And then the wind picked up later because uh, yeah, it was first on the 10 meter and uh, I rode it on the B setting. That's how you ride it with a little bit more yeah, direct feedback, a little bit more bar pressure. And uh, yeah, I was loving that. And uh, later on, I tried it on the A setting. Uh, the factory setting on which it normally comes and there it was just super light and easy to fly and um, almost too easy for me but uh, I was happy it made such a big difference because on the B setting I was like oh this is quite a bit heavy I was having sometimes trouble holding my edge because it just kept pulling but uh, on the A setting yeah uh, people won't have that problem so it's great that it has two settings and it definitely makes a huge difference so people can really ease into this uh, kite and um, yeah, also the 8 meter when the wind picked up, uh, riding it in the lagoon a little bit. It just took me straight up and it's just, yeah, so maneuverable. Also the 10, I could even down loop it with, with one hand with my hand in the middle of the bar. So I really enjoyed that because almost after every jump I do a down loop. I like it just to, yeah. to save me or a heli loop. Yeah, it's a super playful kite, the, the Moto X Apex. And I feel like it's quite, it's, you know, light, light bar pressure, but still a really direct feel and it's just kind of your go-to if you want to have mix up your sessions it's a really good all-round kite um so whether you want to surf the waves do bigger do freestyle um you free riding it's uh, it's your go-to kite and i really like having a kite that i can do everything with because i love mixing up my sessions and not doing the same thing Amazing. the whole time and would you change the setting from A to B if you go wave riding, for example? Uh, well, to be honest, that's the only thing I don't do. I don't really do wave riding. Okay. Um, okay yeah, yeah. But I think that would be good, really nice for the wave riding. Um, or if I'm, like, for example, if I'm, I did this huge downwinder um, mm -hmm. in Brazil, and then it was really good on the, the A settings because it's like you're kiting for hours and hours and hours, so then your arms are falling off, and it was literally, it was no tennis elbow super light and if you put it on the b settings it's um just like a, you have a little slightly more of a direct feel but still not too heavy bar pressure because you don't want to have it too heavy but you want to have just the right amount and that's i think it. that was uh yeah that's it's perfect on the, the b settings yeah 100 percent. No, i really enjoyed the feel of it and uh yeah also with board off you still know where the kite is at so then you have time to put the board back on and then yeah, finish your trick and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was great to share the water with you and shred. And now we're driving back to Bloberg and there's the most incredible rainbow. It's so beautiful. It's just the perfect end to the day. We had a, like a wild wavy session, which was quite, to be honest, it was pretty hard to kite there. It was really hard to get a good takeoff because it was pretty choppy. 
and now and then afterwards we had this incredible flat water session that was showing the rainbow <laughs> <laughs> rainbow so sound. nice oh love it definitely well yeah thanks for checking out uh, this video and uh, our session we had a blast and if you want to yeah, try out the Cabrina Moto X Apex. Definitely give it a shot. Um, I really enjoyed the feel of it. And uh, yeah, I kind of compare it to the, the Orbit as well. But um, yeah, I felt this one had a bit more feedback for me. It was a, a little bit more powerful on the B setting. And uh, yeah, that's something I really enjoyed. But all the guys are personal preference. So definitely give them a, yeah, a test at a demo day, for example. And uh, yeah, I hope you're gonna have uh, many good sessions. So thank you very much. Hannah, no! you're awesome. Oh, you too. <laughs> See you. You're so awesome. <laughs>